pleasant good evening to everyone. Today is Monday, the 17th of January, 2022. Welcome to the Class of Seals evening session. This class is being recorded, but for our members of the class, it is only available upon request and the class is listed as private, but please keep the link because at the time that we should make the link public, you will have access to that link for a period of time. I wanna say a special good evening and, and a special um, welcome to all members of the class of steel, uh, acknowledging our COO in the person of Her Excellency Doreen Ibarungi out of Uganda, I equally acknowledge our Chief of Protocol, His Excellency Dr. Donald Ewers, our, our Chief of Protocol who is here in the UK. I wanna also acknowledge Olusugun Ulukoya who is our Youth President and Coordinator for all of our youth initiative. We also acknowledge Her Excellency Margaret Ahmed, who is responsible for Homemakers Women's Development Initiative, one of the organizations that is closely affiliated with the Class of Steel and is in consultative status with the United Nations. Acknowledgement for Her Excellency Zainis Amaka Curry and Chuka Ameka, who is our web developer and responsible for our cyber security in the class of steel. I wanna say a special uh, good evening as well to Reverend Dr. Paul Udemba, who is also amongst us in the class of steel as one of our members as well. And having in the class with us this evening is Her Excellency Jeannie Steele, the first lady. This evening's class is quite special for the next coming sessions. Her, Her Excellency has prepared um, she's done some extensive research and has put together the class that we are going to have for this evening, which is very, very interesting. The title of this evening's class is What's Holding You Back? Uh, we want to look at what's holding you back, what's hindering you, and what would empower you to go forward. So I want you to take careful notes of the class this evening because there's a lot of content. And, and I believe that this evening's class, it has the ability to take you to the next level. So let's, let's jump straight into sharing our screen with you so that we can get into this evening's class. What's holding you back? And why did we choose this subject, what's holding you back? We chose it because a number of individuals um, that are a part of what we're doing have been speaking about the challenges that they're faced with, the difficulties. And, and we decided that what we'll do is we will do a class specifically for individuals understanding what's holding them back and, and, and how they're able to get to the next level of what is happening with them. So here we go, what's holding us back? Hold back, what does it mean? It means to, be, has, to hesitate to act or hesitate to speak. A hesitancy, a hold back. What does it mean to be held back? Preventing or restricting the progress or development of someone or something. You could hold back someone or you could hold back something. You could hold back information or you could hold back a person or you could even hold back a, a thing from going forward. How can one be held back? It's a very interesting question. A lot of us are looking and saying, I'm being kept back, I'm being hindered. But have we looked at what are some of those things that are holding us back? What are, what are some of those things that are keeping us from going forward? And I think 
if you know what's holding you back, you would be better equipped to be able to move forward if you can eradicate or remove what's holding you back. There are a number of ways in which a person is held back from success. These ways fall under two categories. Of course, I can assure you that others would say, oh, there are a whole lot more categories, but I want to focus on the two main categories of being held back. Your mind, the mindset. Your mindset is based on how you think, how you process things, the way you look at life. It's the paradigm, the way through which you perceive things to be, should be, or the way they are. So you're held back by your mindset. And then the second one is things external to you can hold you back. External to you meaning you want to do a project, for example, but you need to have an architect to design your project. If the architect is not able to put your drawings together, he is a hold back for your project. The architect could be a hold back because if you don't have those designs and those drawings to submit to um, Tongue and Country Planning, then you would not be able to submit your plans and start your work going. So you could be sub, um, hindered by others, persons who have a part or a stake in what you're doing and they have not fulfilled their role. So external to you that you don't have any control over. So what I want us to, to observe is things that hold us back that we have control over and things that hold us back that we don't have any control over. As we go through this training, I'm going to give you the tools to deal with all of them. Your self-talk based on your thoughts and your action or inaction that follow. That's your mindset. How you talk to yourself. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this done and nothing is going to stop me. Or, man, I really wish I could do this. Man, this seems so difficult or so challenging. It's impossible. I, I don't think I can get this done. I No, I don't think I can. How you talk to yourself is going to determine your success or your failure. And yes, you do talk to yourself. As a matter of fact, I, I want to spend a little bit of time here sh sharing something with you. A, a lot of you in your quiet times, or a lot of us, all of us in our quiet times, when we look at what we're going to accomplish or try to accomplish, we talk to ourselves. How many of you know that? We hear things in our head. And those things that we hear in our head govern what we think and how we feel. And 90% of the time, those things govern the outcome if we, if we focus on them. Things external to you, your response to things you can, can or cannot control. Now, this is all in your mindset as well. How you respond to things you can or cannot control is going to determine whether you're held back or you're pushed forward. What's holding you back? Comparing yourself to others. When starting something new, you tend to look at others who are further along and expect that your results ought to be similar to theirs. How many of us go through that? You're doing a project, you're doing something that is already done. Others are doing it. But we judge ourselves and we compare ourselves and our progress to theirs. And sometimes that is holding us back. Sometimes that makes us look at ourselves. For example, some of us are, I'm 50 years old. And, and, and my zeal for mentoring the youth on Saturdays is the hope of capturing them and importing into them a mindset that some of them are in their late 20s, some of them are in university and the early 30s. If I give them what I have earned through experience, hardship, difficulties, and they grasp it, 
by the time they're in their 40s or even their 50s, they will be times more advanced than I am because they would have had time to use the skills and the ideas that, that I will be sharing with them. But when we compare ourselves and we look at, we say, my goodness, I'm 50. And there are people who are 30 years old and they're 10,000 times better off than me. There are persons that are 25. Why, why am I 50 or 55 or even 60? And, and I'm in this position. Why can't I be better? Well, please stop comparing yourself to others. Your journey, the things you had to do in life, the responsibilities that di diverted or derailed you are different. And, and, and don't be harsh on yourself. You're still alive and there's still hope. So I don't want us to be a people who are going to compare ourselves. Compare your progress to someone else. Don't compare it. Do not compare your progress. Nobody knows the amount of responsibilities that you have in your house on a daily basis. Nobody knows them. And equally, you don't know the, the amount of time that is available to somebody else to do what they do. For example, I get in trouble a lot when I call people sometimes at the early hours of the morning. There are certain people I know that I could call without trouble, like His Excellency Dr. Ewers, because His Excellency Dr. Ewers and myself, we're late birds. We go bed sometimes 1, 12, you know, His Excellency is starting to wean in and, and change that a little bit by trying to get some early sleep. But we, we tend to be late birds because we're always working. We're always doing something. We're always trying to progress. Her Excellency Doreen Burunji, it, it, if you call her late, sometimes she's in another meeting or a conference. So you can't even, you can't, <laughs> you can't even have access to her excellency now because why? We, we're not eight, eight o'clock sleepers. We're always pushing the bar to, to, to accomplish what we need to accomplish. So we don't compare ourselves to others because others might have responsibilities that cause them to respond and behave differently. Believing that someone is better than you are. Listen to me. I don't think anybody is better or worse than I am. Simply because I don't even compare myself to others. I think that everybody has different skills, different abilities, different capacities. So I don't compare myself to others. But this is one of the things that hinder us and hold us back. Comparing ourselves. Trying to be someone other than yourself. None of you could be me. My wife and I and, and some leaders were having a, a discussion about capacity. And, and I said, if I give somebody a platform and I tell them, I want you to speak for an hour and a half uninterrupted. I don't want you to ask any questions. I don't want you to to lean on anybody that's with you. I want you to speak for one hour and a half consistently and hold an audience. The truth of the matter is that most people don't have that capacity. Of course, unless you're a preacher, some preachers could preach from, from sunrise till sunset and they don't run out of conversation. But, but if you're not a preacher and, and that's not your forte, it'll be challenging for you to do it. So don't try to be someone else because you see it looks easy to someone and think, oh, that's going to be a piece of cake for me. Or don't look at somebody and, and that, that finds it difficult to do and automatically think, I'm not going to be able to do that. No. You are a unique individual with your own capacity and you operate and function at that level. And as you do that, you will be more successful. Don't compare yourself to others and don't try to be someone else. Making comparisons can make you feel inadequate, incapable, and discouraged. As a matter of fact, um, this, this little symbol here of an apple and an orange, they might be the same weight and look the same shape, but trust me, they're different. You might, you might look like this person. You might, you might be in the same university, in the same college, and, 
and took the same, the same subject. But trust me, your ability is going to be different than theirs. Appreciate that. And, and, and be comfortable being you. And don't try to be somebody else. Instead of comparing yourself to others, seek advice and mentorship from those who inspire you and those you aspire to be like. Being like someone does not mean that you are doing what they're doing the way they're doing. All of us have attributes that, that we can adopt from individuals. There's some things His Excellency Dr. Ewers have that, have that I need in the class of steel, but I also need them in me as an individual. And there are things in Her Excellency Doreen Burundi that I need in the class of steel, but I also need them in me as an individual. His Excellency Architect Olukoya, Her Excellency Zionist, all of us have things that if others look at us, they can model themselves after us in some of those things. So seek advice and mentorship from those who inspire you. And they will help you to get further instead of comparing yourself to others. Find out about their struggles, their mistakes, and the hundreds of improvements they've made to get them to the place they are today. I'm pleased to be a, a, a mentor in, in marriage and relationships that I've been doing for so many years and, and truthfully, very successfully. As a matter of fact, it's one of my pet peeves, helping individuals with relationship problems, be it sexual, be it communication, be it financial, be it emotional, be it children, no children, be it marriage from a, a you know, cultural perspective. I have a really wonderful time discussing and empowering individuals from my experiences because I am experienced in those areas. And when, when persons ask me about the struggles, I'm pleased to tell them about the struggles. As a matter of fact, part of the success of my current relationship with the First Lady is because of discussing our struggles, our hardships and our experiences and looking at how we can tweak our personal relationship to be stronger. So it's important to find out about the struggles and the mistakes of others. Some people say, oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me about the mistakes. Don't tell me about your troubles. I don't want to know. I don't want to know them. Well, please, if I should give you some, some wise advice, it's good to sit down sometimes and, and, and speak to individuals who have failed at some things that you might be trying. Because if they tell you how they failed, you might discover that might be one of the very things that you might be implementing without realizing it is prone to failure. So hearing sometimes a person's failures can be a very, very good advantage um, for you in the way forward. Always remember why you're doing what you are doing. Instead of comparing yourself to others, remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Everybody does things for different reasons. Everybody has a reason why they're doing what they're doing. Why do I do what I do? And I can assure you there's so many people that over the past couple of months have been calling, calling myself and First Lady and asking to be partners with us and associates, and, and, I, and I've declined them. I've declined them by simply listening to them, and immediately I hear them talking about how much money they can make and, and how wealthy they can become, and, and I'm thinking, no, 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 quietly. I'm thinking that quietly to myself. I'm not thinking about how wealthy I could become because of the class of steel. The class of steel is my humanitarian and philanthropic work. The wealth that is going to come into the class of steel is real and sure and certain, but it's not going to come because that's what I'm targeting. It's going to come because if you do good to a nation and you help, then of course you're going to prosper. Of course you're going to be successful. It's a prerequisite. But if you're focused on being in a position where that's all you're looking for, 
chances are it will elude you. And the reason why it will elude you is because your focus is only on what you can get out and not what you could put in. How many persons will last this long in an organization that has not given it any income in two years? How many people would still be doing this? Not many, because they would see it as a waste of time. How many of you know that if you have a vision that is a long-term vision, don't compare your progress to others that are looking financially successful while you don't at the moment because you have a hundred year vision. There, there might be just a quick fix. Uh, are you with me? So make sure you do not compare yourself to others because your intentions might not be theirs. Shift your focus to where you are today compared to yesterday to keep an accurate picture of the progress you're making. I'm very pleased of where we are in the class of steel because I know that we're not the same place we were a few, a few months ago. I know that we are doing phenomenal. We are making great progress. We are building strong alliances. We are building sustainable relationships. And we're making sure that we're adding value. But we're not a quick fix. We, we're not in this for the quick fix. Please remember that. There is no quick fix to success. If you want immediate gratification or you want immediate return on investment, I'm not even sure what I could tell you to do, to be quite honest. But it is not going to be your business, your project, or your idea. They're going to take time. Increase your knowledge and practice your skills that you may become more confident. What does it mean to become more confident? It means that the first time you get a new idea or a new strategy and you try it, it might annoy you. It might overwhelm you. Interestingly, if I might share something with you about comparing yourself to others, I, my, my, my nephew, and this is important, a very, very good point. My nephew has been playing Fortnite for a lot of years. He's a player. He's a gamer. He's very good. My goodness, when I'm playing with him, sometimes he, he's torturing me sometimes. You do this wrong, you do that wrong, you need to do it this way and do it that way. But I listen and I stay quiet and humble myself. And while I'm playing, I'm thinking, Michael, you're a mentor in a class of steel. Imagine how some of the members of the class of steel feel when they're recognized they're not able to get some things due. They're comparing themselves. They're overwhelmed. Imagine. And I go through the process with a smile. Why? Because I'm getting better. Why? Because I'm not quitting. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm going to practice and I'll get there. And it's like anything else that you're going to do. Increase your knowledge. Practice your skills that you may become more confident. What's holding you back? Asking yourself the wrong questions. Sometimes, sometimes we ask ourselves the wrong questions. Spending too much time asking these questions could cause us significant holdback. Is this possible? And then guess what happens? Hmm. We sit down, we focus, we try to answer it. Is this possible? Hmm. Is this really something that I can get done? And sometimes we spend so much time in the realm of, of this question that we never get going because we find ourselves asking everybody the question, do you think it's a good idea if I start a sheep farm a project? Do you think it's a good idea? I mean, I don't know. Where would you start it? Where would... Is this the right thing to do? What's holding you back? You've got the vision. You've got the plan. You've got the strategy. You've got the team. But all of a sudden, you're being held back. Why? Because you're asking a whole lot of questions now. 
Why are you questioning yourself? Is this the right thing to do? Don't start something if, you, if it is not the right thing to do. And somebody might look at me and say, but how do you know it's the right thing to do if you don't ask the question? Well, if you want to do something, the reason why you want to do it surely is going to tell you if it's right or wrong. You want to do it because you see a need that needs to be met. Either a need that is your personal need or a need that is the need of others. Either you're meeting your own need or you're meeting someone else's need. So don't ask yourself questions that will hold you back. Am I good enough? Of course you're good enough. Of course. That's why the vision came to you. That's why the idea came to you. Because you are. Don't question yourself. What if? Those what ifs can be good and bad questions. What if I do this and, I, and, and, and this happens? What ifs are good if they're going to cause you to be progressive. What ifs are bad if they're going to cause you to be distracted. Take that note in your spirit. What ifs are good if they're going to cause you to be progressive. What ifs are negative if they're going to cause you to be distracted. These questions are unhelpful and will sap your energy and motivation. Ask yourself, asking yourself the wrong question. Nope, don't do it. Instead, mindfully change the types of questions you ask yourself. For example, how will I make this happen? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's a good question. How will I make this happen? All right? Ask that question. What's the next step? That's another question to ask yourself. What is the next step? Who can help me with this? Remember we're talking about your team. Some of you were with me on Sunday and, and wave at me if Sunday was good. If Sunday was good for you, just give me a wave. Just I can see you. Just wave if Sunday was good. Sunday give you some good points. Uh, uh, I was very excited about Sunday. Sunday was very good for me personally. But, but who is your team? Spend your time in thought and study to find an answers that will help you move closer to success. Journey to your answers. Don't just sit and wait for the answer. Journey to them. Oh, go to the library. Go, go to, uh, to your mentor. Go to your team. Go to your network. But whatever you do, let it be productive for your success. What's holding you back? What are some of the other things that are holding you back? Waiting for another's permission. Waiting for somebody else's permission. You want those you care about to approve your ideas, plans, and direction. How many of us are like that? And that's the truth. How many of us want to do things and we're waiting for others' permission to go ahead? We don't go ahead. We don't progress. We don't move forward because we're waiting for the permission of others. Now, being a part of the class of steel, again, I, my intention as your mentor is to empower you to be successful with what you're doing. Not asking my permission to do it. You don't need my permission to do what you're called to do. You, you don't need my approval of your ideas. If I'm your personal mentor, one of the things that I, I say to individual, Do Doreen, I, I spend a lot of personal time mentoring uh, Her Excellency Doreen Burunji. And one of the things that I, I, I say to her is, you do you. Don't ever try to be me. Don't ever try to be like me. 
Don't ever try to model and emulate me. Do you because you are the best you you can ever be. I don't look for my approval for your ideas. Tell me your ideas and ask me, how do you think I can make this happen? That's better. Are you with me? Don't ask me if I like your ideas or I don't like your ideas. It's irrelevant unless, of course, it's pertaining to the class of steel. Because the class of steel, as you would say, is, is my baby. But when it comes to your baby, don't ask me if I approve of your ideas. Ask me what I think about them and, it, and if I can give you a suggestion on taking them to the next level. But I am not here to approve or disapprove your ideas because a lot of times individuals are held back by others who waiting to approve or disapprove them. Don't put yourself in that category. Step out of that box. You don't want to disappoint someone or deem special to you. How many of us want to do things but are held back because we don't want to disappoint somebody that is special to us? Sometimes you got to be focused. And there are some people you are going to disappoint. There are some people you're going to make unhappy. But you have to focus and don't let these things hold you back. Some of you have kids that are, that are in a place where they're daddy or mommy, do you think this is a good idea? And they will hold you back. And, and it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate that as I mentor, and, and that's why we're going to do this conference importantly, menopause, menostop, or menago. It's important because one of the things a lot of elderly folk that talk to me in, in mentoring and they say to me, your excellency, one of my biggest problems is my kids. I gave all of my time to them. Now they are 30 and 40 years old. Imagine this. Your kids are 30 and 40 years old and they hinder you because they know best for you. And you sit and you wait on them. You sit and you, you don't want to disappoint them. And you don't realize you're getting older, you're closer to your grave, and they're, they're getting on with their lives. And then when you look back at yourself on your deathbed, you, what, what are you going to say to yourself? I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. But my children. Because you love them and you care about them, you don't want to hurt them or disappoint them. It's understandable. It's very understandable. But you need to put it within the context. Is this holding me back? And can I do better? Because if you don't look at it and, and put yourself in the right position, you will find yourself with problems that you will look back and regret. You don't, you, you allow yourself to end up paralyzed by non-supportive comment or an unenthusiastic reaction. I want to share one of the most horrible experiences that I had. And you're going to say to me, oh, but that doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> I remember I was working on accomplishing something. And I sent out a message to my international community. And one person that I respected so highly, one person that I value their opinion, one person that has the ear of a large portion of my audience back then, back at that time, said, don't mind him. He's only trying to be relevant. <laughs> they said don't mind him he just tried to be relevant and it was not in the positive it was in the negative don't mind him he's an idiot he's 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 just trying to be relevant he ain't even relevant right now he's just trying to be relevant i'm going to tell you the honest truth that statement 
tore at me when I saw it. But it tore more when I saw one or two of his supporters laughing on that comment. And I wanted to, to delete my, my posts. I wanted to delete and stop my Facebook profile for a while. I just wanted to duck down and say, uh, I don't exist anymore. I've just gone off the scene. Come on, somebody. Have anybody ever said something to you that derailed you? Or am I the only person that is that naive or simple? Have anybody said anything to you that derailed you? Because it happens. Because we have such a high value. Don't allow it to happen. And, and, guess, what, and guess what my wife said? <laughs> my wife had a conversation with me. I said, hon, you travel all over the world. You, you have an audience that is global and you are going to allow somebody that is, and I'm not going to label anything, but that is in this position that, that have not even left Barbados two or three times and is seated inside of a little cubicle. You're going to let this person derail you because of a few people in, it, in his audience? Come on. And I quietly left the post, left the comment. And five years later, my wife keeps looking at me. She says, darling, you're only trying to be relevant. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You have to sometimes go through those processes and don't allow anybody to paralyze you. Just stay focused. Instead of waiting for others' permission, what can you do? Know why you're doing what you're doing. I'm repeating myself again because we just said that. Know why you're doing what you're doing. Be confident that you know what's best for you. Doreen, I cannot know what's best for you. Your Excellency, Dr. Ewers, I can never know what's best for you. Zionist, I can't know what's best for you. Excellency Dr. Da Reverend Daniel Sapuru, I can't know what's best for you. No, no one. Margaret, Margaret, uh, your Excellency Margaret Amegre, I cannot know what's best for you. Nobody could know what's best for, for you but you. And you have to stay focused on what's best for you. Trust your gut and your heart. Trust that what you're doing what you're planning, what you're strategizing is in your best favor and you're going to be successful. Trust yourself. Live by your standards and purpose. A lot of people don't have standards or they don't have a purpose. So if you don't have standards and a purpose, then every wind that blows will, will, will override you and derail you. Every other person that doesn't give you permission will hinder you. But if you know your standards and, and your purpose, nobody will derail you. A number of persons will ask you, why are you still going to the class of steel Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday? What is this? Are you crazy? But you have to know your standard and your purpose. You, you have to know what's best for you. you. You have to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Nobody can't know for you. Doing what you believe is best for you will much more likely cause you to create a life that makes you happy and fulfilled. It will. But listen to me. Your happiness and fulfillment is going to be, in some cases, somebody's sadness and disappointment. I'm going to say that again because you need to, you, you need to kind of grasp that. My happiness and, and my fulfillment is going to be somebody else's disappointment and embarrassment or shame or frustration. But I'm willing to live with that. 
I'm willing to live with my happiness and fulfillment rather than be held back by somebody else's happiness and fulfillment at the expense of my progress. Are you with me? One of the reasons why I could move along so easily when somebody leaves me or moves away from me is because two things, two things, two things. Number one, I've had so many experiences of being abandoned that I learned that abandonment doesn't kill you or destabilize you if you keep focus. Number two, Sometimes being abandoned early is good because it means that when you have something worth holding on to with that person, they will not be around. How many of you know that sometimes there are people that are around you and you never understand their motives and they sit close to you until they get to the place where you have reached such a high level and then all of a sudden, boom, that kiss on the cheek. And then you're dead, crucified by a kiss. Sold out for 30 pieces of silver. I hope I'm making sense what I just said. What's holding you back? Waiting for the right time. When is the right time to start what you want to do? You create ideas in your mind that convinces you that the time is not right. You tell yourself, I need more money. I can't do this unless I have more currency. I need more currency to, to do this. Uh, now is not the right time. I need to get some more experience. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, uh, I, I, I don't think I have the capacity or the ability to do this. I, I, no, I need more experience. I'm waiting for the economy to improve. Interesting. I'm waiting for the economy to improve. Where will that happen? I have no support. Okay. I have no support. I'm waiting for God to give me a sign. My God, are there not many of us that want to put a, a piece of cotton outside and, and says, Lord, if the cotton is wet, then you have spoken. And if it's dry, you haven't spoken. How many of us want to put out fleeces? My goodness. I'm waiting for God to give me a sign. I want a sign. God already gave you a sign. The sign was, it is he who calls you to will and to do of his good pleasures. The sign was, this is a good idea. Why don't you do it? Oh, let me wait for a sign from God. I need more time to, to do this or to do that. I need more time. I need more time. You allow these delayed tactics in your mind to win. Because let me share something with you that I bet you didn't notice about all of these waitings. Let me share something with you. I need more money. How much money? You haven't put a figure to it. How much? And how long is it going to take you to get the more money? There's no time frame. There's no figure, no time frame. I need to get some more experience. How much more? What more? There are persons who have been in job training and, and mentoring for 10 years. Joe Biden, Joe, if you need to get the experience of Joe Biden to be the president of the United States, look forward to being president when you're in your, in your, in your 70s. Unless, of course, you want to be like Obama and be the president when you're younger. I'm waiting for the economy to improve. What is improve? Be honest with me. 
what really is the improvement of the economy? Be honest with yourself. I have no support. How could you have support where you haven't even started something? Who's going to support nothing? Why have you started? And who's going to support nothing? If you don't have something that you're doing or something that is going to add value to you, why are you going to get support? Why is somebody going to support nothing? And why is God going to give you a sign? What type of sign? What, what is the sign? Be specific. So that, say, I'm going to put this, this, this car outside and, and if God lets the rain fall on this car tonight, then tomorrow morning when I wake up and I see the car is wet, then I will, I will do this. Don't, don't, don't wait for God to give you a sign. What sign? All of these are baseless time wasters. They don't have no base. I need more time to, to do what? Focus on these points and seriously look at yourself and observe why you're not further and what is stopping you from getting any further. Instead of waiting for the right time, the right time is always now. Just do it. It's always now. Just do it. When is the best time to start working towards what I want to accomplish? Right now. Even if it means going and Googling a website, even if it means going and looking at a friend and giving them a call and asking them a question, when is the right time to start on what you want to do? Now, go on Amazon and, and buy a book. If you feel incompetent in what you want to do, but believe it's something that you should do, go and buy a book, XYZ for Dummies. How many of you know that, that series? ABC for dummies, plumbing for dummies, computer, computer studies for dummies. If you consider yourself a dummy and something that you really have a passion about, go go, go do the Amazon.com and, and look for a book that talks about it and, and start right now. Right now, go and, go and pay a little bit of pennies and get a book. Google and get a PDF file of or a journal that somebody has written in, 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 about that subject. But do something now. Start and, will, and, and you will discover what else needs to be done or improved. Start. Start. And, will, and you will discover your purpose. <laughs> First lady, I, I noticed that all of these, and, and will you discover your purpose? <laughs> Start. And will you learn how capable, resilience, resourceful, knowledgeable and powerful you are start and you'll find out start and see what happens next the time is now three minutes past eight and i've gone on for one hour and we're gonna bring part two of that um training uh wednesday i'll bring part two on wednesday and and her excellency Jeannie still has some some notes and some points to share with us on Wednesday when we uh, come to class. But for there, I'll stop. And, and on Wednesday, we will continue from slide number 11, part two of what's holding you back. We will look at those points for us to go forward. Thank you so very much for listening in to this evening's class in the class of steel. I'm looking at keeping the classes within one hour and, and making sure that if I need to do a part two, then I will do a part two and a part three so that we structure our classes within that hour time frame. Remember, we have a hundred years of the class of steel and, and we have a lot of time, but I don't want to deride uh, or take advantage of a subject matter and just run along, but I want us to be able to focus on the value we can derive thus far. I'm going to start with His Excellency Dr. Yours. Your Excellency Dr. Yours, you are the first up. What is your, uh, you're smiling big and broad. 
Welcome to the class this evening, Your Excellency. So I was waiting for the others to kick start it. And, but anyway, um, I took some pointers down. A pleasant good evening, Dr. Michael Steele, and to all the excellence in the house. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in the house uh, class of Steele another time, another Monday. And I like the way you said something that kind of, because um, he had said to me before, why come to the class to steal Monday, Wednesday, Friday, even Saturday, and even Sunday? So you, we have a full pack impact. But I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I know my impact. I know what I can learn. And and um, even the topic you preach on, on um, Sunday, if I can just touch a little bit of it, that, let go. Uh, there's a lot of things in our lives and things that we're holding on to. And um, I like the terms and the, the, the topic that you preach on Sunday. But going on to what are we holding you back? Um, sometimes in life, we it's the little small things in life uh, waiting for the right time. And you will say, as you said it before, what is the right time? Whenever it's going to be the right time. I want to learn to drive. I want to travel. I want to build a house. I want to get married. When is the right time? So you have broadened her, uh, her, her horizon regarding that. In believing in yourself. Um, I took some little notes down and while you were there talking. And another thing that um, comes out of this also, what I would look into, is belittling your accomplishment. Um, at times when we accomplish things, as likewise what you're saying with the class of steel, we don't uh, elevate ourselves regarding our accomplishment, holding back in our hurts and learn to let go, um, be committed and trust my one I use in my entire life is trust your gut feeling and go with your heart. And so this, uh, it, uh, sir, you really touch things that can bring value to our lives and bring value to myself and look at areas where what's holding me back. 2022 coming, the year 2022, what are your goals? What are your, um, people say they have their, um, uh, goals to make for each year and what's holding you back to accomplish it. So it is something that it can, uh, a food for thoughts that we can, I can look into what's holding you back, Donald, what you, what's holding you back and look on the things, the little things that you tend to um, saying, you're waiting for the right time. You're trusting God. You, you know, we use all these little jargons and it can be a setback. And so what's holding me back, sir? There's nothing that holds me back. The, world, the world's an oyster and the sky's our limit. Whatever you want to do, where, uh, money, we tend to dwell for some reason. And I'm glad you touched that. We tend to dwell on that heavily, money. I can't do this, I can't do that. But I think if we take baby stage, and if I think if we take small ventures and small things and build, if you start building from... Uh, it is uh, 300 and, uh, 365 days in a year, and you start from the beginning of the year, you'll be amazed how much you can accomplish at the end of 365 days. Thank you, sir. I hand back to you. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency. Very good point. As a matter of fact, I, I like the point that you really brought out as well in, in, in the end when you said you can look at the steps that you've taken and in 365 um, days of a year, because I, I love how the class of steel is growing mm. and, and we're growing one, one, as a matter of fact, I would actually like to say we're going one class at a time. Yes, yes. And, and somebody might look and says, wow, y'all have over 200 classes on, on YouTube. How did you do that? But we did it one class at a time. Yes, yes. We, we, we did it by being focused, by being committed and dedicated. And there were times, Your Excellency, you would remember, and Olukoya, um, Your Excellency Olukoya, uh, I'm going to call on you next for your comments, Your Excellency Olukoya, if you're available. Th there were times that the class of Steel, when we first started, had 30 persons in class, mm -hmm. every single class, 30 persons. 
But we dropped down to a time where we just had five persons. Did I stop? Mm -hmm. Did I give up? Did I throw in the towel? No. Was I discouraged, disappointed, and hurt? But, But you don't stop. Because if you stop, then you will never be able to say, look, we have over 100 videos because when will we get back to the stage where 30 people are going to show up? So it's all about continuing and, 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 and staying focused. Your Excellency Olukoya, please, what is your take on this um, subject that we have um, looked at this evening? Thank you very much, Your Excellency. A pleasant good evening to you and uh, the management team and everyone in the class this evening and to our larger community that will be watching this um, video. I want to thank you for tonight's class and um, it's actually a very timely talk. I appreciate the fact that there is both the internal restraint what can hold us back from within and also what can hold us back from the external. And the moment you started off with that, it just sets the entire um, class in perspective for me. And I really want to appreciate what you have shared. And I would like to say that some, some may be strong in handling the internal one, and then they may be weak in handling the external one. Because to a large extent, we have little or no, uh, little or no control over what happens on the external. Uh, while the one that is the internal one is, is of course dangerous, if uh, we are defeated from within. And once we are defeated from within, then there will be problem. In fact, as you were just uh, uh, sharing, this question came to me that, uh, and I said, I will ask you at the end of the class, sir. Um, you are very strong. You are able to handle the internal, uh, um, uh, pressure and things that can hold you back. You've been able to overcome it, not totally, but to a, to a level, a comfortable level. But the external one too can have impact. Now, how do you take control of what you don't have control over? <laughs> That's the external one now. I know in the course of the class, you are going to elaborate more on the internal, the external and all of that, but the external one that you don't have control over, you know, how do you take control to the level that it will not get at you? Because sometimes as little as something from the external can just knock us off. And it's because some people have not encountered that if uh, you know you just feel you have everything together. So my my question, sir, is that is it something that you need to? Why you are not expecting uh, evil as in quotes, but you need to prepare when the external one will come. How do you take control? That's my my concern, sir. Your Excellency, um, thank thank you for the question. And, and, I, and I will answer it this way and 100% honest. Interestingly, you see me as your mentor Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and, and, you, and, and, all, and Saturday, and, and now Sunday. And you see me all the time throughout the whole year. And, and I have, to some degree, a level of composure that you see all the time. Yes. I want to share something with you. Don't be... Um, deceived, if I should use that word, or misguided by, by that appearance. I have come here to the class of steel many times 
with tears in my heart, in my eyes, and, and challenges that I'm facing that are overwhelming me. And when I get off the class of steel, which in, is, is this platform, I, I have to go sometimes and be um, not consoled, but I have to go sometimes and be in the audience um, of my wife to, 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 to kind of work out, how are we going to deal with this baby? As a matter of fact, um, Doreen, as our COO, um, His Excellency um, Dr. Ewers, um, Her Excellency Bishop Dr. Comfort Adu, uh, th there are persons that they see the pain, they, they see the tears, they, they, they know the, the hurt. Uh, Her Excellency Zionist uh, has gotten to a stage where she, she understands and she knows she lives in the UK here and, and we get an understanding. The, when my when my externals in, in, the, in the scenarios when my um, ex-wives have left me, it derailed me. I, I, I became, I, I was suicidal at one point. I, I was. But in dealing with my professional responsibilities, I always had a, a way of focusing on why I do what I do. If I, if I go to the world with my tears and my pain, when I'm a mentor, I'm one who is supposed to be lifting and carrying and supporting and encouraging. If everybody saw all of my vulnerability, my, my tears and my pains, then it would make it very difficult for you to receive me as a mentor because a part of you will see me just like yourself. But here's the interesting thing. I actually am just like yourself. Your Excellency, the things that upset you as a person that hurt you, some of those things are the same very things. If they happen to me, they will hurt me. They will offend me. The difference is that I have an audience that I carry my hurts to, my disappointments to, quietly. And when I leave that audience, I leave it there. As a Christian, a lot of us don't understand the strength of our Christian or our divine position. How many of you have ever heard the pastor say, bring it to the altar and leave it there? Well, what that means is you, you need to have some place where you could take your, your horrible moments and be real and, 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 and let those individuals that you, you, you deem qualified to, to know your weakness and your shame and your pain and your disappointment and your hurt and your anger. You, you need that outlet. And when you put it there and you walk away, you leave it there. You, you, you don't allow it to affect your progress. I've come to the class still many times in the past and, and I couldn't wait for class to finish because of the pain that I was going through based on what others have done. But you still have to keep going and maintain a professionalism. So don't ever look at me as if I'm superhuman. I am not. I'm just like you, Your Excellency Olukoya, to some degree. The only difference is that I have an audience in my wife who, who as a matter of fact, let me ask my wife, darling, could you please unmute and and add value to what I'm sharing, please, my love. Greetings and God's blessings upon everyone. Yes, darling, please um, elaborate exactly what you would like me to confirm. Yeah, basically, um, my, my weakness in, in light of when I come to the class of steel, a lot of times I look strong and I look as though I, I maintain a level of composure professionally and, and, and consistent. But I want to confirm that because of my intimate audience with yourself as my wife and others, there are times that I have come here and, and have been totally broken and don't even want to be here but I have to maintain a, a, a profile because of my role. And, and you are in the background bearing the brunt of, of my hurt and my pain with me. 
but that's not something that everybody sees. Yes, that's correct. And in every in every journey, I would say we need cheerleaders. We have to have cheerleaders, whether it's your mentor or mentors, whether it's your spouse, your partner, it could be your children if you have adult children and you're working on the same team. You just have to have that um, support that you know that when you're in a difficult position dealing with things that are beyond your control, you have a place you can turn to. You have people who understand where you are at and the information or the guidance or support that they can give you would be according to where you are because in some cases they may have gone through it or because they're walking through it with you, they're, they're equipped and more able to help you um, through that challenging time because we all face those seasons where there are things going on that are beyond our control there are situations there are people doing things that we can't we have no control over what they do but we just need to keep moving forward and his excellency has that support system as he always mentions the other mentors he speak to and some of you there in the class he would speak to personally as well as he has myself which is a 24-hour support so <laughs> so we all we all do need to have what I call what I term cheerleaders persons that you know you can rely on when things get tough we can't we can't do this journey alone whether you're in a relationship business no matter what whatever you're you're dealing with in your life whatever journey you're on in your life a support system is critical for such times Thank you so very much, Your Excellency, for, for your submission. I appreciate you, darling. Olukoya, I, I want you to, to verbalize um, your, your response to that, please. Thank, thank you very much, Your Excellency, because um, I didn't know you were going to call First Lady to talk. Um, I just want to request, if you can confirm, sir, that um, we are going to be more deliberate you know, in the class of steel, you know, to have, she calls it chair leaders. Uh, 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 what I had in mind, the, I mean, the, it's just, uh, should I say, um, the name I would like to call it is support system, you know, because we really need people we can trust, people who can be very vulnerable before them. And, you know, it will help us to, no matter how hard we are hit, we, we, we quickly call ourselves together and then we just discuss it and we come out of it faster. You know, I, I think, sir, if I may suggest and request that um, you create that cheerleading uh, system and we are deliberate about it in the class of steel and because over the over since I joined the class of steel, I found a home. I found people I can trust, people that are vulnerable to me, and I can be vulnerable to them. I can tell them things I can't share with anybody. That when we went through what we went through as a family, it was just me, my wife, and our three children. It was very tough, and um, we could only do, and we could only console and uh, support ourselves to the limit of our knowledge. But you know, we have people in the class of steel that have wealth of experience and are more matured and are older, you know? So sir, if we can make it more deliberate, you know, I think it will be a good thing and people will not hurt for too long. That's just my suggestion. And I really want to appreciate you and your wife and everyone in the class of steel. Just seeing your faces alone is a huge encouragement to to a lot of us. Thank you very much, sir. You, you know, Your Excellency Olukoya, I'm going to be uh, um, a little transparent with you. One of the one of the things that why I do the class of steel. I, I've spoken to a lot of you per personally, and and I identify that 
our world is hurting quietly and privately. Persons go to conference and motivational talks and then they go home to empty houses and no solutions, but just a lot of information. And the reason why you notice, all of you would notice that I keep these classes two hours or more specifically because I want to hear people. The subjects that I give are subjects that challenge where we're at as individuals, all of us, every single one of us. I, I don't give one and one is two subjects, you know? I, I give subjects that are pertaining to where we stand as individuals. And, and then the reason why I do videos is because I want to see you. I want to see your face. And, and I want to pick on you if I realize you look down today as a mentor. That's why I, I request for persons to have their videos because I could see you, I could see how you look, I could see your body language, and, and I could say, okay, Doreen, talk to me, come on, tell us. I, today looked like it was a rough day. You know, I, I, that's why we do this this way, because we're a family. Added to what you request, I, I think it is a, a very good request. However, I, I will charge you with the responsibility of, of putting that together. Why would I charge you with the responsibility of putting that together? Because you see a need for it. But how many others have that same very need that you might not realize that the class of still Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays is fulfilling that need where they have a family and they're able to talk. So with that being said, I agree with you. My wife and, and myself, we are here. And we're very transparent, as you have noticed. Our relationship is, is very, very tight. But as much as it's tight, we also look at how can we help you unashamedly? Because when we have our challenges, our challenges are not foreign to relationships. Everybody goes through them. And, 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 and when we do our family things uh, that I'm going to be putting in place, we'll get a little bit more closer. But I want to appreciate you, Your Excellency Olukoya, and, and for your wife here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask Her Excellency Adiola to, to share her thoughts on, on this evening's subject thus far. What is what you back? <laughs> Your Excellency. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Your Excellency. <laughs> I just came back today. <laughs> so I'm back home. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So I thank God for the message today. And uh, you know how you've challenged us. Actually, all those things you said are things that are likely, you know, to hold anybody back if we do not identify them on time. And uh, in the course of my working with God and having understanding of God, you know, I've learned to allow him to guide me, to help me. And relating, you know, today's topic to what we learned uh, last week, you know, I've come to uh, a stage where I've learned not to allow anything to hold me back. What I need is just for me to understand the timing, what to do, to have confidence in myself, and to trust God for what God can help me to do. And, and I've seen God, although, you know, things I want to do may not happen the way I expect them to happen or uh, my own timing when I expect them, you know, to happen. But I've discovered when I put my trust completely in God and allow him to guide me and to direct me, you know, he has been the one leading. You know, there are some things that I would have left out of it. I would have, okay. You know, just like you said, that sometimes, you know, in the past that I'll be expecting someone to applaud what, I wanted to do, or I want somebody to say, okay, yes, go ahead and do it. 
But just like you said, you know, people's opinion do not matter. Not that canceling, you know, just like you said, you know, where we take cancel is very important. But people's opinion, you know, do not matter in what I need to do or what I want to do or what God has, has led me to do. But what matters most is God's leading direction, you know, guiding me in the path I need to go and I need to follow. There are so many times when I try to seek people's opinion, you know, that I discover I'm being misled or I'm being misguided from the right path I'm supposed to take in achieving things I need to achieve. So like you said today, you know, we need to have confidence in ourselves, believe in ourselves. It's very important for us to have mentor and take counsel from them. You know, there was something that happened in the past, you know, that my husband, you know, realized that it's good to have people you submit to and you seek their opinion. But sometimes they don't see what God has opened your eyes to see. But from what they, from the counsel they've given to you, you will see the light in it. But sometimes it may not be what they want you to do. But in the long run, if you listen to the leading of the Holy, Holy Spirit and the way God is guiding you, you know, you will now see the real path to take and what to do in achieving what you need to achieve. And things will fall in place, stand places for one. So thank you, sir. Thank so you. we should not allow anything to hold us back, either external or internal. Thank you so much, and God bless you. And so I want to use this uh, uh, opportunity to appreciate the first lady. Honestly, she 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 has been a strength, and you know I appreciate her knowledge of uh, uh, her knowledge and understanding of the things that need to be done. So God bless you, First Lady. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. One of the things that I like for husband and wives to appreciate is, it's not what am I doing? It is what are we doing? Um, the First Lady, the First Lady is, is responsible for everything that I do. Does that sound good or bad? It's not about sounding good or bad. If, if I do something, it's going to have an impact on her. It's going to have an effect on our marriage, our relationship. Anything that I do, it is. If I decide that I'm going to go and travel, I, I have to get her approval. Because when I travel, it, it's going to impact us. It's going to impact our finances. It's going to impact our time. It's going to impact our, our family. So, so she's responsible. If I decide I'm going to do the, the class of steel on, on another day and I add something else, it is going to impact on us. Sundays has been a, a challenge to get to because Sundays is an impact on us as a family. So everything that, that we do, it's a team effort. Let us, let us do this. And, and she's there supporting me, but, but, but she's not supporting me. She's supporting herself. I'm supporting myself and she's supporting herself and it's because we are one and 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 once you and your excellency and his excellency or the are one you don't have any headaches you just have hurdles to overcome together there are times that you're gonna cry and and he's gonna be happy and lift you there are times that he's gonna cry and you're gonna be happy and lift him but that is necessary all throughout the process None of us is a tower of strength all the time. We need each other. And, and your Excellency, you and I are going to have a talk. I'm going to give you a call in a couple of days and, and we'll have a conversation on, on the way forward pertaining to your heart's desire, your Excellency. I will not just hear you, but I will look at what can we do to make it um, according to your desire and, and what you would like to see because this is a hundred year vision and we need to have something for everybody to do 
within that time frame. So thank you so very much for, for your submissions. Your Excellency Doreen Burundi, please, what is your take? And then I'm gonna ask Margaret. Margaret, I just wanna hear your take specifically because you are very important in this process and I'm, I'm talking to you and sharing with you because I want you to, to derive benefit um, from what we're doing in your project. So Margaret, uh, Your Excellency Margaret Ahmed, I'll come to you next. Go ahead, Your Excellency Doreen. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency, uh, Dr. Michael Steele. Uh, First Lady Jenny Steele, all the excellences in the house, the management team. Uh, what holds me back? All my life, I have had um, a challenge of my family holding me back. <laughs> family. I think that's the worst enemy of any person. If your family holds you back, then will the, will the world support you? You have to be struggling to prove yourself. Um, to, you actually don't know that it's the family holding you back. You are, they, 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 usually, they usually act or they hide in the shadows. So it takes you forever. It takes you forever to realize that the people that, that the reason why you have not been going forward, it's your family. It takes a lot of years for you to realize that the people that you have been growing, eating together and sleeping together, they are the ones, they are the very reasons why you're not going forward. I'm gonna give one example. It is similar to yours, uh, Dr. Michael Steele. You said that you, did, you, you don't want to disappoint someone you deem special to you. One time uh, we had a family gathering and it was a function of uh, some of my relatives had come back from studies from China and they had acquired master's level. And so they were throwing party. They were, um, um, you know, when I say, informing their friends and relatives that the, the children had, had obtained their master's level in different uh, professions. And so while I was, I was there, I was celebrating with them. And all of a sudden, and they said, one of our daughters is the managing director of Beyond the Sky, Jesus Christ. And then they asked me to confirm that. I say, no, I am the managing director. I am not that person. It's not the managing director. I am the managing director. I've been running the company for for eight years and here you are saying the managing director, it's just someone who has just finished the master's level. I was really, really, uh, I was knocked off my feet. I was, I, I just looked at myself and I'm like, what am I, what is this? What nonsense is this one? How come that I was not, if they wanted to raise themselves up they should have at least come and talk to me in secret that, you know what, we are going to, to make this announcement and please don't take it in an offensive way. And so they made the announcement. And for me, I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, come back to this family gatherings. Why? These are the people, these are people who are also shareholders of the company. And they appointed me as managing director running strong for all those eight years. Have I been a managing director to their eyes? No, 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 no. They didn't see that I'm suitable for that position. And therefore they could not even introduce me as a managing director. I didn't even ask for it, but they are already replacing me without my knowledge. And these are my shareholders. <laughs> I said, mm -mm. this is how they have been in looking at me and from that day on I decided that I am going to change the way this company is going to run uh, these people are not part of me I go it this takes me to this point where you say that mm, doing what you believe is best for you will much more likely make cause you to create a life that makes that makes you happy and fulfilled. So I made a decision that 
I now understand why I used to call them for board meetings and they would never come. I now understand why they never read the reports that I used to present to them. Because it, for them, they never saw me as their MD, as the MD for Beyond the Sky. And so I decided to stop calling for board meetings, calling, sending reports, and even involving them in the activities of the company. I said, they're not going to stop me from, they're not going to hold me back anymore. They are not going to do that to me. It's fine. I'm going to drive this company. By the way, they had left me a long time ago. They were just waiting for an appointed time where they will just put their MD. They feel that this one will drive the company and put me aside for all the times, for all the years I had been running the company. So holding back, what holds us back? You just need to identify them quickly, the areas that, which it could be, the external, but also this one is internal. It's part of your family. This is internal. These are people you live with, you stay with, and they do not believe that you're able to do it. And they work so hard to make sure that you failed. That is, how do they do that? They don't broadcast you well. They don't, they, they, they don't speak about you well amidst of congregation. Uh, uh, architect Luca was saying, this is a place where they, and Jenny and First Lady say, this is a place where we are cheerleaders of, uh, of each other. When somebody makes, uh, w w like now in the class of Steele, uh, Minister Ewers and Dr. Michael Steele and all the others and all other excellences in the, in the class of Steele, they keep saying, oh, they cheer me up. They, you know, they cheer me and say, you know, you're doing so well, you're improving. And that makes me feel so good. I feel like I have to go back to the car. I have to keep coming because here I find positive energy. There is encouragement. I can do it. I can do better. And it, that's why if I am in a meeting, I do not see, I don't see, I don't see my family. No, I don't see anybody. I see the class of steel. I see the people of the class of steel in my faith, in my image, uh, this is what these are people I see and they say, I would, they would want me to do it very well. And I do it so well, by the way, I do it so well beyond, beyond their expectation because they are cheerleaders. They are people who believe in me, my ideas, my ideas. My, I have not had challenges within my external, within me. I have been able to overcome that. Like you say, if you don't know a subject, you go do some training, you go do some reading and you get to know and nothing should stop you from achieving your goal. So this, I have been practicing it, but the biggest challenge for me has been the, the external, especially the immediate family, the immediate family. And uh, I have been struggling with it even till today, right now, as I speak, is still the war that I have, but I thank the Lord so much for this uh, topic. And um, I, I'm very sure very many people have different ways of different uh, things that have been holding them back. It's just that we don't have enough time, but I'm sure if we have that lesson whereby a class or a time whereby we can all exchange our experiences, we'll be able to learn from each other and we are able to find the indicators when they come in our lives and we avoid that because it slows it will slow our progress so with that being said i would like to say um lastly i say i trust my guts and i trust my heart what is inside of me for as long as i know it's positive i keep pushing on pushing on and i before i know it i'm already there so thank you so much, Dr. Michael Steele and Janie Steele for the topic. May God richly bless you. And I thank you for all those who have made a submission that has blessed the rest of us in the class of steel tonight. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency Doreen. And, and Doreen, just for the record, both myself and my wife, we, we are fighting horrible battles with family. Horrible battles meaning the acceptance and rejection factor and it will never cease 
And unfortunately, it is not something for us to change. It is something that we don't have a choice but to live with. And, and living with it just means that we do all in our power to be a good, quote unquote, steel. My wife is a, a steel now. She, she's going to do her best to be the greatest steel she could be and a representation of her family name, the best of her family name that she can be. And, and that's all we can do. And as we do that, that's our that's our testimony because we will have those who are the horrible examples of our family name we'll have those that are amazing examples of our family name and we have those that we wish were not family but that's not something that we have a choice about and 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 one thing that i will tell you doreen or lukoya everyone in the class of steve please hear me please hear me please if you don't have somebody that you could cry with, you've not started living yet. If you don't have somebody that you can call them and tell them your, your, your most horrible pain and, and, and they, 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 they shed a tear with you because they know it's not something we can do anything about. You just can't do anything about it, but they know that I've got your back. And, 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 and you know that if you, you know, I, I say something and I'll say it in the class of steel and, and I can get into trouble for saying it, but that's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't mind getting in trouble for this statement. I have some ride or dies, some people that I, I say they are ride or, ride or die. And what I mean by that is, is if they, if they call me at their dumbest moment, I'm one of the persons that is going to be, how are we going to fix this together? And nobody will know what we did. Let me just put it that way. Nobody will never know what we did. And, and you need some of those folks in your life. You need some of those folks where you can just be, be naked, take off all of your clothes and, and don't be ashamed emotionally, physically, or mentally. You need it. It's not a want. It's a need. It is not a want. The class of steel is not going to be it. The class of steel is a group, but you need somebody that is going to be that right or die with you. And, and yes, we are as a unit, as a family, we are right or die. We are. But you're going to need somebody that you can call and say, I've got something that's tearing my heart out of my chest. And you just want to talk. It's not that they're going to give you a solution. There's no solution. You'll have it till you die. But the fact that you have somebody to talk about it with is what makes the difference. I hope that makes sense to those of you who are listening. Because if I didn't have a few of those people, trust me, trust me a thousand times over, the amount of times my heart has been ripped out of my chest unceremoniously, I can assure you, I would be of absolutely no use to humanity if I didn't have a few ride or dies. So you need them. I hope that as value to them, look for them and, and find them. Margaret, go ahead, Margaret. As a matter of fact, interestingly, Margaret, that you are next to speak on this subject. And, and interestingly, because Margaret is a ride or die for a lot of people. Homemakers Women's Development Initiative is one of those organizations that is a ride or die for a lot of people. Your Excellency Margaret uh, Med, could you unmute yourself and just share your thoughts, please? Thank you very much, Your Excellency, my Bishop, and then the First Lady. I hope you'll be able to hear me with the video on. We are hearing you 100% and you look beautiful, by the way. Thank you so much. I like this topic. What is holding you back? Wow, my bishop. It's a good one you are giving me to start the year. Another year has finished. We've entered another year. What is holding you back? What is holding Margaret back? You said mindset, it could be in my mind, 
the external. What is holding me back? I will put what is holding me, not you. And you gave us a lot of advices that are very, very good. And you know, the mind is a terrible thing. The mind is a terrible thing. Sometimes the mind can tell, oh, can you do this? Oh, Bishop still has done his own this way. Will you be able to do it? Can you? And then we have a lot of the external ones that are there punching us, punching us. You are trying to deal with the women. The youths are saying, oh, you gave the women this one. You didn't give us this one. But in all, you said something that touched me. You said, don't allow people to paralyze you. Don't. That's my take in this class. Don't allow people to paralyze you. Because sometimes you will be on a journey, maybe you've called the youth to come for a program. Maybe one of the women will just enter and see people and say, oh, this is what we want. Not what we had discussed before. And then sometimes I feel bad, but I pick up again. Yes, I pick up again. The women, the youth, they all need to be treated the same. So I shouldn't allow anybody to paralyze me. And how will I make things happen? What's the next step for me to take? Who can help me? You've helped me with this class, my bishop, and I like it. It's certainly going to help me to carry on this 2022 on. It will surely help me. It will surely help me. It's a good one. I'm so happy I'm in class today. I didn't miss this class. So thank you so much for allowing me to say something. I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so very much, uh, Margaret. The class is for all of us. And I choose classes and first lady choose classes by look at where we're at as individuals in our lives and in our journeys and seeing what help could give us the extra push. And that's why we choose the classes specifically and the subjects. I'll be continuing part two on Wednesday so I hope that you are there for part two as well, if you're able. Are we? Your Excellency, Reverend Daniel Sapuru, what's your submission to the class? And by the way, all of your submissions help the other person that is listening. Don't take lightly another person's submission. Thank you for your patience and your respect for other people's submissions while they're sharing, because I hope you also glean strength from what is in the class and, and, and how we are growing as a family. Reverend Daniel, Your Excellency, please go ahead and give your take. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, um, Bishop Michael Steele, and uh, the First Lady, Jeannie. I just want to say thank you. Um, I want to apologize for joining late. Now, this is because I don't know what happened my link disappeared. So, and I just want to thank the first lady because I, I called her and she gave me back the link. Okay, I just want to thank uh, her and thank every person in the class. So, hmm, obviously, um, right from the beginning of class this year, the topics have been wonderful. And um, these topics, if we follow the teaching and follow what, um, I mean, the, the, the pieces of advice uh, that were given, I am really assuring 
all of us, myself included, that we will go far this year. There's no doubt about it. And um, what is uh, holding me back? It's a very wonderful topic also. And uh, when I joined was when you were talking about mindset. And um, I grasped a lot of things from that. Because the way you, uh, the way one, um, uh, you know, the way my, the, the mindset of somebody is actually affects the progress of whatever he does. Um, uh, he, uh, somebody's mindset can hold him back. Somebody's mindset can uh, push him forward. And I just want to thank God for that. Secondly, I also want to say that I was very happy when you mentioned uh, that uh, we should live by um, our standard and purpose. Because uh, if you don't have a standard, or if you allow somebody to set the standard for you, and, uh, and uh, allow that person to dictate the purpose, you will find out that you will not achieve anything. But where you have your standard and where you have your purpose, no matter what um, the external and even the internal um, uh, elements that can pull you back, you will know that you have set a standard for yourself and you know the purpose of that standard and you will move ahead. Obviously, that is wonderful. And um, uh, I believe that uh, whoever that is in this class and whoever will hear um, uh, us through this video, I strongly believe that if we think about standard and if we think about purpose, we will find out that we will move ahead. And when you talked about, um, uh, you know, certain things that can hold us back or we allow to hold us back, you talked about the improvement of the economy. <laughs> and when I when I when I think about that, you I, I when will the economy actually improve? That is a question. When will it improve? And um, therefore, we shouldn't allow this to set us back. And um, you, you also talked about, uh, you know, when, you, when, when we ask what holds us back, the right time. When is the right time? And according to the teaching this evening, the right time is now. Whatever we have set for ourselves, now is the time to start. If I somebody I read where somebody said, now is for the wise, and later on is for the fool. In other words, procrastination can disrupt a lot of things. And therefore, I am very happy, you know, to be in this class. When I was um, trying to link up and um, I couldn't find my link. I nearly cried because I told my wife, I am going to miss this class today. And um, I quickly remember that I could call the first lady. And, um, and of course she gave me the way out. So what holds us back, whether they are external or internal, I strongly believe that um, we can, uh, 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 how, how do I put it, surmount or, or dismantle these things if we would, uh, uh, you know, follow the teaching of this day. What about the economy? Uh, well, we have, I have talked about the economy and um, of course I've talked about time and um, uh, I know that the fact is we shouldn't allow people to paralyze us. We must do everything 
to move ahead because that is the most important thing. In 2022, what will hold me back? I want to believe that nothing will hold me back. I will continue and continue until I achieve the bubbles. Thank you very much. And I want to also uh, greet everybody in the house. I want to thank specifically the first lady, Jeannie. You made me not miss everything in this class. And thank you very much. I also want to thank um, um, everyone that is here, all the excellencies. Thank you very much. And um, Your Excellency uh, Bishop Michael Steele, thank you for the, what you have allowed yourself to be used to achieve in the minds and hearts and in the lives of people. The Lord is going to bless you no matter what. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency Reverend Daniel Sopuru. Thank you. And uh, I, I would have heard for you to cry. So any of you who missed the link or can't find it, as a matter of fact, um, First Lady, um, I think what we would do is we would just click resend on, on everybody's link every um, time we have class so that when you check your emails, you will see an email from the class of Steel with your link to log into the class um, to make it easy. We can't send it by WhatsApp, but we will send a, a resend so you can just check your email. Anytime you miss the link, just check your email and the link will be in your email for you because you can't log in with somebody else's link. It's yours. That's okay. Thank you, sir. I, I, Zionist, I'm going to come to you next, but I want to go to Reverend Dr. Charles, Your Excellency Dr. Charles. Um, would you just share your thoughts uh, on the class this evening, Dr. Charles? And I only do that because I know you're in, in Nigeria and you're, you're bandwidth and data, but Zionist, I know you're right here with me. So Zionist, you will, you'll be next after uh, His Excellency Dr. Charles. Good evening, Your Excellency. Good evening. I am so excited, for sure. It's like you just got me in every side in this today's topic. What is holding me back? In fact, when you started there, uh, I just put my, my vehicle in gear four, said, let us ride on. Because everything you spoke about was everything concerning me. First of all, you started with the mindset. And the mindset happened to be the battleground. Whatever war you win in your mind, you win. And if you lose it in your mind, you lose. And the strength of you carrying on is how you manage your mind and maintain focus. And then when you were talking about the things external to you, wow. You took me back to my secondary school years in physics when we were taught about the law of inertia. And the law of inertia states an, that an object continues in its state of rest or a uniform motion in a straight line except acted upon by an external force. And this external force, the things that happen externally, for instance, there is something that happened to me. You remember when you appointed us as ambassadors? Hmm. I discovered that my passport has expired. It happened to me more than 30, 20 something years ago. Billy Graham paid my bill to come to Holland for a conference, both the flight ticket, the hotel reservation, and the, the transport, only for me to submit, and the visa as well, he paid for the visa, only for me to submit my passport, I discovered it has expired. Then for me to get, get the renew the passport, they say booklet has finished. I had to wait for two months. After that, the conference was over. It was not my making. 
But so an external force was trying to truncate my vision. So when this time around, it happened the same time, do you remember what I said to myself? What I said to myself is, affliction can never before me the second time. Then I asked the, the immigration officer, what do I do? There must be a possibility. He said, only if you can go to Abuja. And I left immediately to Abuja. And after that, I fought and fought and fought until I got it. So this is external things, the things you may not control that may not be your making is a practical test for your mindset, the, the core you have in the inside of you. And the only thing that will make you to scale through is perseverance and consistency. I remember there is a saying that says, you should not be sluggish or lazy, but be you imitators of those who through faith and patience obtain that which is promised. Your Excellency, you struck gold in my life. Because everything you, you spoke today was just practical about myself. And I saw myself as the only person in the class that you were ministering to. Then, you went to talk about asking yourself the wrong questions. <laughs> you can never uh, estimate or undermine the power of negativity. When you ask yourself the wrong question, first of all, you have started falling. And before you know what is ha happening, you will fall flat. Then another one is waiting for others' permission. Waiting for others to permit or approve what you are doing. Your Excellency, I, I had an experience when I want to get married. I prayed and God confirmed. I spoke to my wife and she agrees. Suddenly, one of her aunties showed up. And when the auntie showed up, <laughs> my wife trusted in her so much. My wife, did, every time my wife said, you can't pray, pray, please pray that this woman will approve this our marriage. I said, but she's not your mother. And I'm not marrying her. <laughs> So, 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 but I kept on. But really, the woman met some harm. She went and and carried campaign everywhere, telling everybody, "I have nothing. I can do nothing. That hunger is going to kill this little girl. You want to give to him and everything." But I kept on praying, perseverance. So, so my, 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 my dear, your excellency, you really struck gold in this. And, and, and if you wait for others to approve, they will not. They will only discourage you because they didn't have the vision you have. It is you that were, the vision was given to you. And it was you that understand the vision. And it is not a must that anybody will buy it or understand it. Correct. It's like driving a bus and a passenger wants to disembark. Go on, drive the bus. Then the last one, we talk about waiting for the right time. Your Excellency, <laughs> I have a lot of experience in this. When I was called into ministry, the Lord said to me, go. But I was busy waiting for finances. I was waiting for know-how. And one night he called me, said, why haven't you? After saying, he said, he said, you are waiting till you have money before you go. But I said, go. And your excellency, you said, you can never have a support except you start. And people see what you are doing, then they will help you. Do you know I went by faith? And when I went by faith without a pause, here am I now. Your Excellency, it's a wonderful evening. And this evening was specially meant for me. In fact, I, I said, 
I will repeat it again. I happen to say to myself, I am the only person you are ministering to. And may God bless you real good in Jesus' name. Thank you so very much. When you, when you speak of the auntie for your wife, I, I will not go into any details or discussions. It's for another class, but I can assure you, my wife and myself can tell you a few stories that will make your eyeballs raise. And, and, and all these years later, we are still the sweetest couple possible. Darling, do I get a, do I get an amen on that one? <laughs> amen. The Lord has blessed me with the best husband on this planet. <laughs> I'm an alien, darling. I'm an alien. <laughs> are we all? <laughs> <laughs> But the journey, but the journey, but the journey to here was riddled with, are you mad? Are you crazy? <laughs> what are you doing? So I think we all have those, those journeys that want to derail us. But the beautiful thing about it is that we're going to sit at a rocking chair after 50 years or 60 years of marriage, should the Lord allow us such a long time and, and, and sit down and and be smiling with each other and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren and all of our sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters from around the world. And others will still be saying, wait and see what is going to happen. Wait, just wait, just wait and see. Why? Because that is just their desire to see one single thing go wrong just for them to say, you see what I told you? But it never had a time frame on it. It just had a desperate desire for you to feel or for you to look bad or for you to be embarrassed. And the chances in life of looking bad, feeling and being embarrassed are the same as the chances of being successful because life will always give us good times and bad times, up times and down times. Yes. And then when we have those persons that are going to come on the side and say, look at what I told you now, that's exactly what I was talking about. No, <laughs> that's exactly the curse they put on you with the expectation that before they die, they're going to see you ashamed. But I promise you, it will not be so for you. They mm. will not get the chance to say, aha, aha, you see what I told you. They will not. And if you continue to live righteously, honorably, respectfully, they will go to their maker and will never have the opportunity to say, I told you so. Your Excellency Zionist, your turn. Go ahead. I see you just wet your throat. My darling, can I wet my throat, please? Good evening, Your Excellency. Bishop Dr. Michael Still. Good evening to all the excellencies uh, in today's class and good evening to every other person uh, participating from various locations around the world. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to be given the opportunity to share in today's um, a teaching which is titled What Holds Me Back? Um, what holds me back, I'm going to look at it from various perspectives. I look at it from various perspe perspectives. Uh, the little things that hold me back and the big things that hold me back from within and from without. I remember when my children were still very small. Any, any mother here would relate to what I'm about to share. I often want to have time to rest. I feel fatigued. I feel overwhelmed because my children were almost a twin because of the uh, age, proximity and age between both of them. So I breastfed both of them all the time at the same time. And I express their milk 
almost six bottles have to be in the fridge of my own breast milk. It was a hard task. And often I would ask their father to give me a relief. He's quite willing to do that. But within a few minutes, he come back to me and say, you can have them back. Oh, why? He said, because you can do it better. You have a magic touch. As soon as you touch them, they stop crying. I had to correct that. I had to rectify that. And in over a period of time, I began to fight him to give me back my children because he got used to what I taught him and he couldn't wait whenever he comes home to gather his, the children to himself. And being a mother, there is always the desire to have somebody help you look after the children. On the other hand, the desire to take the children back. So it got to a point where I'm, I'm having to remind him that the, the children came from me and I need my children. He can't keep on taking them out without me being part of it. He said, you wanted a rest? I got used to what you taught me. And I love, I love looking after my children. And so supposing I never shared how I felt with him, supposing I never took the time to encourage him, to guide him, I would have continued in that mindset of I am a mother, it's okay to do it all. The man cannot do it because it's not the man's job. They don't know how to do it. But that very scenario and the approach and the solution meant that I had a me time. So that mentally I had the rest and I was able to love children and their father and the families around me. So that's one thing that could have held me back uh, from having a well-rested time to be adequate, a proper mother, a loving mother to my children. Now, there is um, a word that the Bible mentioned. There's um, a passage in the Bible, Ecclesiastic 11.4. When you watch, when one watch the wind and watch the clouds, they will fail to sow and they will fail to reap. And watching the wind and watching the, the cloud can fall into procrastination like uh, His Excellency Reverend Daniel Sokuru mentioned. And we know that procrastination is the enemy of success. So watching wind and watching the, the cloud can hold us back. And again, another passage of the Bible did mention purposes, without adequate counsel are always frustrated. And your excellence, you mentioned mentor. It is highly crucial that we have some form of mentorship in our life. That would help a long way. What holds me back or what holds anybody back? There's this idea of feeling defeated by the idea. We feel defeated by our idea. It's too grandeur. Who is me to do it? I can't do it. So a feeling, a, defeat, a defeatist attitude or mindset can hold one back. There's also an issue, um, another factor is improved mental, improved mental stamina and dexterity. Uh, again, I use me being a woman as an example. A lot has gone out of me, physically, mentally, emotionally, a lot has gone out. And it takes the grace of God for a woman to go through childbirth and still have the oomph or the zeal to stand and to continue. It's not undoable. It depends on the plan. Depends on how you plan, or how the woman plan things out. In my own example, I left all that I think I should be in the world to take care of my two girls. Do I, do I regret it? No. 
But the issue is getting up again and getting going because there's been a big time gap, time lapse. A lot of things, technology, I had my big, big, my first phone, the big bulky one before my children were born. By the time my children came along, they're passing their iPhone to me and I'm having to learn how to use iPhone because I was used to the old ones. So those, the time lapse, the, the, the time invested in others, um, Her Excellency, um, uh, our CEO, mentioned family. The time we invest in our family can be a big holdback. It is a big holdback to me. It was a big, a big holdback to me, uh, or for me, I should say. And also, being overly cautious, being overly cautious. The river is so deep. So therefore, I'm going to stand by the riverbank and I'm not gonna move. And yet we know that the only way to get across to our destination is to chance it, what goes back, being overly uh, cautious. There is a saying, there's a, a story about the ego and the chicken. When the ego sees itself as a chicken because it got adopted and reared, among the, chick, the chicken, the ego then believes it cannot fly beyond the heights of a chicken. That's what holds people back, what potentially can hold somebody back. But in all of this, what I see that holds back, holds me back, or have the potential to hold me back, lack of wisdom and discernment. Because when the wisdom is there and the discernment is there, we begin to import and embed all the advices, all the, all the uh, blueprint of how to do things better, which you have given to us. We begin to import it. And so in, in, in psychologically, physiologically, financially, um, um, technologically, there's a whole lot of internal and external factors that do uh, impact upon people. And there's, in as much as I have a lot to share, um, I'm mindful of the time. So I just summarize, lack of praise. Sometimes when you do something and you don't get a praise for it, it's not essential to get a praise, but it's a place for what I'm saying. There is a tendency to withdraw and don't do no more. And the, the problem is when you withdraw and don't do no more, chances are you deny another person the potential to benefit from what it is you do or could have, you could have done for somebody else. Self-doubt, I've mentioned that before. Fear of rejection failure and the feeling of inadequacy. And we've talked about seeking of others approval. Allowing opportunistic people into our life can deter, it can hinder, it can hold back one from moving forward. All this together, we have static mindset, seeing limitations, rather than possibilities. Life's clutter, the clutter of life could be the excess friends we don't want, we don't need, that are not useful to us. The excess of projects, we can have ideas. If we don't prioritize our project and ideas, they become a clutter, they become hindrance and can hold us back from moving forward. All this has got all this comes in a designer bag called mindset, like you said before your excellency. And for me, um, overcoming my mindset, I'll literate on what um, my, um, some of the excellencies I've mentioned. Do not allow people to paralyze you. And I relate this to family. I've been paralyzed by family, but there come a time when I say no, 
enough is enough. Children have grown up. They place a lot of demand on me, even though they've grown up. But there comes a, a, a point where I say, no, I can't do this no more. And do not let others set the standard for you. Only my mentors, I will invite them to support me, to help me set. I will set the standard and I will share it with my mentors to seek their, uh, their perspective. And again, perseverance and persistence. First, if you don't succeed, brush yourself up, get up, and try again. Try again, says the song writer. On this note, Your Excellency, I want to stop and I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. I hope the OM, om wasn't there today. I'm learning. <laughs> thank you so thank you so very much, Your Excellency Zairis and Maka Curry. Always taking copious notes of the classes and, and I appreciate you and your comments as well. And, and I continue to encourage you as you continue to grow with us um, in the class of steel. Bishop Dr. Comfort, I do, I, I, you're the last person to speak. You saving the best for last. Your Excellency Dr. Comfort, I do, um, can you unmute yourself and share your thoughts? I see you running around with two different logons. So go ahead, Your Excellency Dr. Comfort, I do, out of Ghana. Thank you, Your Excellency, Bishop and Dr. Mackie our mentor. The Lord, we should bless you. I salute you and I salute the First Lady. And I salute all the excellencies in the house. It's always a pleasure to be on with the class of steam. But it happens that sometimes one would do, be far away doing other things, but then we still want to hang on to the class of school. Notwithstanding, the little that I heard today, uh, I just want to make some few uh, statements or comments. Um, the word determination, I think, makes the day. If I was a determination, because whatever one, one wants to do, there will definitely be something to hold you up that will prevent you from moving forward. If it is not your friends, it can be anybody. It is it, not only our enemies that can uh, put uh, a hold on what you want to do. Anything at all that you permit yourself will be allowed to stop you from making your head weight. So I, I, the letter that I, I, I was able to grab from uh, your, your talk this evening, and which is my take, is that you must stop negative questions. As soon as you have a project or something on your mind and you want to do it, you have to have determination and the, and the tenacity to move forward. It is like learning how to walk, a child learning how to walk. If you fall and then you, you keep lying down, you will not know how to, to walk. You will not even get the stamina. But as you, you walk and you fall and you get up and you walk and you fall, you get up, definitely your limbs will be strengthened and it will uh, help you to walk uh, uh, very fast and then Athletes. So what I have gathered this evening is that I'm looking at challenges that are around me and then just come on it and say that uh, notwithstanding of what I want to uh, be or what I want to do, I must definitely move ahead. There was this uh, statement that was said, I always sometimes remember one of my uh, colleagues in the executive rank when they asked uh, about me that who is comfort, and he said that he is somebody, she is somebody who never look at mistakes and then shine out, but look at mistakes and use them as a standing block. Now somehow I was so surprised because I've never thought it that way. So I asked him later on that why he said that 
and he narrated some challenges that I went through, but surprisingly, he saw that I was still moving ahead. So I made it my mind that I'll add that to uh, my, my, my life. If I have not seen you, somebody has seen then I'm not that. And I'm so glad that you have also hammered it today that when you start asking negative questions, then definitely you'll not be able to make it. But if you start asking, uh, turning the questions on and say, oh, how can I do this? When can I start? Who can help me? How do I get this? I think that is the way forward. And uh, our mentor, uh, I, I think you will never be disappointed at the end of the day. You will see that we are able to move ahead. Though it may seem slowly sometimes, but we will get there. We will get there. And then we will give the class of the, the class that is always with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency Bishop Dr. Comfort Adu. Um, I want to confirm that everybody that is here, I know I can't see your videos to say that you are still here, but can I confirm that everybody that is here, that you are here, please, first thing. Olukoya, are you here? Um, Adiola, are you here? Dr. Charles, are you here? Yes, yes. sir, I'm here. Yes, yes, we are here. Dr. Yours, are you here? Yes, sir, we are here. Olukoya is here. Your Excellency, Dr. Yours, are you here? Yes, I'm here. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, I want to confirm, um, Olukoya, this is your team, and this is the official core team of the class of steel, nobody else. I want you to take a note of every single person that remains here, and this is the confidant, this is the private, and this is the core team of the class of steel. Nobody else. Do not ask me to bring somebody or invite somebody. Everybody that is here right now, right now, I'm talking about recording what Olukoya said about a team that you can be confident and be honest and transparent and open with. If we're going to discuss financial businesses, if we're going to discuss anything personal, this is the team that will be invited to that meeting. And, and I hope that everybody is in agreement with that. Um, Mar um, Your Excellency Margaret Ahmed, when we are going to be discussing, you're okay? Your Excellency Margaret Ahmed, you're okay? You, oh, you say okay. When we are going to be, when we are going to be discussing the finances or when we are going to be discussing money or anything pertaining to any of our projects or anything we are doing, this is the, the team that we will be having on board. Nobody else. Because of the fact that we all rule together. We all have the same heart, the same passion, the same commitment, and we all respect each other. And, and I want to um, congratulate you guys on being here. This is what I actually planned for, for this evening secretly because what hinders you is a go-to group, a group that you could say, let us, I get it done. So as far as I'm concerned, the class of steel now have a let us, and this is the us that is in the class of steel. If there are any discrepancies, any issues, any problems, any challenges that needs to be discussed on a corporate level, this is the team that is going to be called for that meeting. I will not be just inviting anybody to meetings because they show up or they look pretty or their bank accounts is fat. I'm showing up those who are committed to the class of steel. So with that being said, I want to thank you so very much, Your Excellency Doreen Burunji. Please take notes of the persons that are here so that you know these persons. And if you don't mind, kindly add um, Dr. Um, kindly add Reverend uh, Sapuru to this list, please. Reverend Sapuru is definitely one of the persons to be added to this list. But this is the core private list for the class of steel going forward. I hope that's okay with everybody. All of our ambassadors and representatives and everything still remain the same, but I'm talking about the confidant group in the class of steel. This is it. We have one, two, three, four, Five men, 
which is myself, Dr. Charles, Dr. Ewers, Olukoya, five men, and also um, His Excellency Daniel Sapuru. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yes, five men. And we have five ladies, uh, Bishop Comfort, Zionist, Doreen, Margaret, First Lady, and Aduola, which is one, two, three, four, five, six ladies. I think the ladies outnumber us, but that's all right. So with that being said, good night and God bless you and have a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the class on, I'll see you in the class on Wednesday, Wednesday, if the Lord spares our life. I love you guys dearly and we celebrate all of you. And remember, night, as soon as they hear yeah. of me, come on, say it. As soon as they hear, as they of, hear of me, me they shall they obey me. me. The stranger yeah, shall up. submit themselves to me. me. As soon as they hear of me, me. they shall they obey shall me. me. And the stranger me. shall submit themselves to me. Amen. Because you Amen. have the answer, you have the solution, you have the key, and you have the right mindset to cause the nations to tremble when you speak. God bless you. Yes. Good night and God bless. I love Good you guys. And God bless everyone. Good night. Bless Good night, you. everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.